Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first webinar of the Lakbay OM series entitled The Nature of Operations Management. We will start our program with a national anthem followed by a prayer. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم امين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين اللهم اجعل شمل المسلمين والكريستيان واللوم في مدينه دبعو وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تجيغ قدوبنا بعد جهلتنا وهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة توقينا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit Amen Our most precious heavenly Father We come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide 
for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. Will we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that may, may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. And now, let us all welcome our MC, Zell Vitali. Good afternoon, students and guests. Magandang hapon. Can you hear me, guys? Please type 1 if you can hear me loud and clear sa ating chat box. Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Please type 1 if you can hear me loud and clear sa ating chat box. Narinig po ba ako? Ayan. So good afternoon again and welcome to another FEU webinar organized with the Operations Management Students Association. We are here with you again to disclose topics that will surely guide and empower your life journey. My name is Zell Vitali and I will be the MC and your online kakwintuhan for the whole duration of the seminar. We are currently streaming live via Microsoft Teams with passionate students all over the country. Kamusta naman ang mga students natin ngayon? So what I can see right now, we currently have a lot of audiences from different schools. So in order to officially give you a very warm welcome, comment your schools or universities below para makilala natin ang isa't isa. Ayan, may may nakikita na akong schools. Yan, universities. Meron galing FEU Diliman, FEU Alabang, yan ang mabilis nila mag-comment. FEU Diliman ulit, asan kaya ang ibang students natin? Mukhang hindi pa ready ah, ready na ba? Comment your universities below. Ayan, meron tayong from Central Mindanao University. Yeah, welcome po sa mga students from Central Mindanao University. Ar meron galing RTU from Mandaluyong. Yan, welcome din po. FEU Diliman. Um, so, maraming taga RTU, FEU Diliman, and Central Mindanao University. So, nakaabot tayo ng Mindanao, no? So, welcome po to so all the students with us today. Um, RTU Boni din. RTU Boni Campus. Ayan, we welcome you po today with us. Bicol University, hello, welcome. 
RTU Pasig. Ayan. LPU Manila. Welcome po. Rizal Techno Technological College. Welcome then. Ayan, so welcome po. So we would like to greet each and every one of you a good afternoon. Ngayon pa lang, we thank you for sitting and being with us today. We're also here tuning in with great leaders and advisors. Kaya naman, iparamdam natin sa iba't ibang side ng Pilipinas ang energy nating lahat. Isang ang malakas na energy level check dyan. Energy level check tayo, students. Ayan, ang dami nagko-comment. Mung reading ready na. Maraming salamat to everyone. Sit tight and relax as we will now proceed with our event. Let's hear the OMSA's Vice President, Ms. Charmy Dakot, for the guidelines. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? Can I see what schools are our participants from? Kindly type your university or your school down in the comment box below. Oh, so I can tell a lot of students from RTU. Is it from Rizal Technological University? Wow, it's great to see you guys here. Oh, I can also see some school, um, some students from Central Mindanao University. So it's really awesome, huh? Can I just say that I am truly amazed with your eagerness to join our webinar today. Opportunities come to those people who realize it and so I really do appreciate your presence here with us guys. And without further ado, hi, I am Charmy Dahat, the Vice President for Internal Affairs of Operations Management Students Association. Before we officially start our webinar, I would like to state the guidelines that shall be observed on the program. We encourage you to comment down your questions regarding the webinar's topic so our guest speakers will be able to answer it after their presentation. And of course, don't forget to fill out the evaluation form that we will be providing after the webinar because it will also serve as your attendance for today. So sit back and relax as we get immersed to, it, to the webinar, Lakbay OM, the nature of operations management. Thank you. So that was OMSA's Vice President, Ms. Charmy Dokot, for the guidelines. Thank you. So before we start, let me just introduce our event for today. It is a webinar that aims to educate students, especially those under the Operations Management Program, to scope technicalities of the OM course, the skills they must possess, and the strategies they must cognize in order to become excellent business leaders in the future. A virtual seminar committed to directing the youth towards career excellence and expertise, guided by two proficient guest speakers that will surely lead our minds to see a much brighter future ahead. Once again, during or after each of their speeches, you can drop your questions right on the comment box and our speaker will do their best to answer them truthfully after their presentations. But before meeting them, sana ready ready na kayo. So are you ready students? Type 1 nga kung ready ready na ba? Excited na ba kayong mamit at makilala ang mga speakers natin for today? Press 1 lang kung ready na. Ayun, ang dami na agad. Mga excited na excited na agad ang students natin. So in hopes to start our new month of September right with enough inspiration and motivation, let us start the first episode of Lakbay OM series. Lakbay OM, the nature of operations management. Let us all welcome our first speaker, the former laboratory operations manager, Intertech Laboratories Phil, and the former junior operations executive from SDS Phil's of Multi Laboratory. Let us all welcome Ms. Nina Mercado. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Is it clear, yes, Zell? We can hear you, Paul. Okay, thank you for that, Zell. Thank you also for that nice introduction. Thank you to uh, Operations Management Student, Student Association of FEU Diliman 
to Ms. Jemina Villarreal for inviting me to be here and to join you in this webinar as your guest speaker. It is my honor to speak in front of the young blood, the young generation, and the future operations managers. So to start with, I would like to share my presentation. Okay, can you see it clear? Is it okay? Can I start? Hello? Yes, please proceed to your presentation. Okay, thank you, Zell, for that. Okay, so I was told that your webinar is Lakbay OM, the nature of operations management. So in my outline, Uh -huh. Okay, I have two major topics. One is operations management in a nutshell, where we are going to discuss the definition of operations manage management, the components of operations management, the scope of the activities in the operations management, the objectives and the management system standards. Then the second topic is I will be sharing my journey to becoming an operations manager. So and it also includes the roles of the operations manager. Uh, please note that before I start, I would like to uh, inform you that what I will be sharing may be different from what you learned from your professors or from what you read in textbooks because I did not formally attend a course in operations management in any university. So I will be sharing based on my learnings from also my other seminars and training, from what I have learned from previous bosses and colleagues as I practice my profession. So I am a registered chemist and I hope I will be able to share something about operations management. Okay. So what is operations management? So there are so many definitions in the books and even in Google, but I would like to stress that I am defining operations management in three places. So the first one is managing production. During the earlier times, operations management is commonly referred as production management. And as the businesses develop developed into several concepts, production management was changed into the term operation management by executives, management executives, and some management guru. But just the same, the, the concept is to plan, to lead, and supervise the context of productions in delivering the goods and the services. Okay, and then the second one is that operations management is delivered, focused, and result-oriented. Results are provided in both effective and efficient manner. So I guess by this time you already know the differences between effective and efficient. Effective is producing the result that is required, while efficient, just to uh, remind you, is also producing what is required, but in a given limited resources without wasting materials, time, and energy. Okay, And then my third definition is more on high profitability. So all businesses strive for high profitability. Sorry. So there is no business without profits. Even NGO maintains the budget allocated for them. They do not look for profit, but they need to uh, manage the cost in order to sustain the budget that they are given to them. But if they are into private businesses, the first and foremost goal is to have high profits not only for themselves, but also to share them to their employees and stakeholders. Okay, 
And then the last one is more on competitive advantage. Operations management is strategic management, okay? That is uh, not behaving in bureaucracies. Executing the business strategies consistently and coherently and with surprising speed to capture a greater market and have the edge over the competition. So it's focused on achieving the results better than the others. So I am defining operations management in those four clauses. Okay, and hopefully that would give insights to the operation management students now. Okay, so I will proceed with the components of operations management. So I have different components. I have included here different components might be not similar to what you already know, but hopefully you will learn something new. The first one is an input output model. So it is the basic model of operations management wherein uh, the concept is to transform input into outputs which are goods or services for the consumers okay and in doing so uh, this model is applicable to both manufacturing and service operations regardless of any sectors be it a private sector or a government sector or an, an NGO, a non-government organization sector, okay? Having that model, the next component is this defining the resources that you will need in the operations and managing those resources, okay? So, ano-ano ba? What are the different resources? For me, first and foremost are manpower. We, the people, the personnel are the first resources that will make the input-output model work. So without the people, the input-output model will be useless. Okay, and what are the other resources that we have in mind? We have money because, of course, any operation will not run without finances. So there should be a need for budget allocation, financial or financial uh, requirements for the operations to work. Next to that are the materials and the machines needed to have the operation process be completed. So when we say materials, it could be raw ingredients for a food manufacturing company, or it could be packaging materials in packing the products, it could be the equipment when it includes the equipment that you are going to use in the manufacture of those products. And it could also be logistics in service operations. So there are, those are the different materials and machine resources that are needed for the operations uh, flow. Okay. And then uh, next to that is another resource is the system or the method. Okay. So of course, there should be a defined system in order to process the requirement of the operations. So the systems include the methods, the test method, the procedural requirement in the operations. It could also include uh, uh, the work instructions or even the instructions of other functions that are interrelated to operations management. Okay, so those are examples of resources. My next component of the operations management is requirements. So what are the requirements? It, it will start with the objectives of the organization. So objectives are uh, the targets, the goals of the business. So the objectives are aligned with the missions and visions of the company. So what are the missions? The missions are the overall purpose of the organization and the approach to achieve that overall purpose, while the vision are the future position of the organization upon completing or fulfilling the missions. 
Okay, so other than the objectives, other requirements can be specifications. So what kind of product or what kind of goods or services do you need to give to your customers? So the, the specifications are also included in the requirements. The next component is planning, okay? In order to achieve the objectives, of the organization, the planning stage is very important. Even in our simple personal goals, we need to plan. Uh, planning is about making choices and how to use the resources that we have. So, sa lahat ng ating gagawin, even you as a student, you need to plan. I, 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 I assume uh, before setting up this webinar, there, there are a lot of planning sessions that the Student Association has done in order to come up with good webinars, okay? So planning is a good key. It's a tool for making the operations management successful, successful in their objectives, okay? The next one is strategy. So strategy are the actions that the organizations will take to achieve the planned actions, okay? So sometimes and oftentimes, not sometimes, oftentimes the strategies uh, needs to be detailed. Uh, the, the person responsible for taking the strategic action should be identified. The time frame as to when are you going to uh, pursue or implement the strategic action should also be included. And the what ifs, so the pros and cons, what risks and opportunities can be determined during the strategic planning. Okay, so after that, you need somebody uh, to be assigned as an overseer so to complete and implement the whole process okay so this is also the role one of the functions or the components of operations management so delegating somebody to oversee the whole process and then control okay in any kind of operations management control is uh, an important component Control of everything in the situation. So we can have system control, budget control, material inventory control, which will be the topic for your next webinar, and other, and other kinds of control. It is a function wherein any deviation from the set standards or from your specifications should not happen. There should be no deviations to those kind of uh, specifications. Okay, and, and of course, when we talk of operation management, we always talk of money. So cost control, cost management is also an important component. Okay, in every meeting, in all the agenda, cost is included. Sabi nga nila, kailangan nakikita ang peso sign, okay? Since Pinoy tayo, peso sign. So, sa iba, dollar sign, di ba? So, when we control the cost, and when the, and when the operation cost is low, it is easier to maintain cost leadership and gain the market with competitive advantage. Okay? And lastly, my component of the operations management is improvement. Have you heard of the word Kaizen? K-A-I-Z-E-N. It is a Japanese term which means continuous or continual improvement and first implemented by Toyota. So the idea is to always strive for any improvement. Look for opportunities to improve. And when in doing so, some organizations provide incentives to personnel who can suggest some improvement areas in any given task or in any given system. 
such that in the process, in the whole processes of operations management, there is a cycle of continually improving and then giving the best products or services to the customers. So these are the uh, nine components that I have defined very important in operations management. Okay. So then we go back to the scope of operations management. Why are we studying operations management? Kasali ba yun sa scope natin? Maybe our goal to be operations manager, kasali ba yun sa scope of operations management? So, uh, unang una, it includes, of course, people, process, and technology, and the applications of operations management into service operations, marketing, and finance. It has already evolved from manufacturing to service operations, and it also encompasses all functions in the organization. It already includes marketing, finance, and even HR, the human resource management. Okay, so some Typical service operations are those that are engaged in professional services like us, then those that are into tourism, uh, health care, those that are into distribution, uh, uh, transport, deliveries, those are kind of service operations. While marketing and finance, as you already know, marketing, there are already marketing groups that are being tapped by organization to handle their uh, sales in order to improve market share. And then there are also financial institutions, those that handle our investments, uh, insurances, uh, our requirements for customs tariffs. So those are expanded. So it's no longer production per se, but more on different functions and different kinds or types of businesses uh, worldwide, okay? And then the second scope is the emerging importance of quality, okay? Uh, it is included in the scope of operations management because the concept of OM is to deliver good quality products or good quality services. Uh, more often, the good rep reputation or the good image of the organization is being spread by the word of mouth. Of course, we do not like to be known because we have poor quality. Any organization would like to be well known because of the very good quality. And with that, the, the operation management includes quality control activities, ensuring that specifications are met in an agreed or committed time to the customers. So quality uh, of the goods and the services so that uh, customers will go back and buy your product or patronize your services. So market gains is included in the importance of quality. And of course, if you have good quality, you increase profits and then lower cost, reduced uh, rework, scrap, and uh, any kind of uh, deviations from the specification, okay? And then the second, the second, uh, the another uh, scope is adding value into the end product, okay? So the growing importance or the growing recognition of the operations management is the realization that OM adds value into the end product. And when we want to achieve uh, adding more value into the end product, we have to add value every step of the way. So we define what we need to give, we, we make the design, we execute, we analyze, and we deliver. So what are the added values? Examples of added values are you offer discounts, more convenient, you have uh, 
faster services, you have improved customer service, you offer better quality than the competition, and then you offer uh, free deliveries. So adding value into the end product is also part of being in the operations management. Okay, so with that, I would like to proceed with the objectives. So you may know that there are so many objectives in operations management. And I think I listed several, which I uh, prefer to be the most important objectives in what I have learned and in what I have experienced. So the first one is customer satisfaction. Other organization would say customer is the king. Okay, so it's creating such product or services that will satisfy the customers by providing right thing at the right price, at the right place, and at the right time. Okay, so we have how many right there? Right price, right place, and right time. Okay, and in customer satisfaction, some organizations have already promoted their level. They already go into customer delight. So, ano ba yung customer delight at ano ba yung customer satisfaction? Customer satisfaction is you deliver enough to, be, to satisfy your customer. While customer delight is you deliver beyond the expectation. So, makikita mo yung wow. Uh, the best example is when you sit in a restaurant and then you wait for your order. Then suddenly the, the waiter or the waiters or the receptionist will come into your table and offer some bread or spread while you are waiting for the foods that you order. That is a process of delighting the customer because they are giving some free added values not only to satisfy the food that you have ordered, the, not only to satisfy yourselves, but to have that wow effect. And with that, you will become a loyal customer. Besides being a loyal, you will still recommend that restaurant to your friends, your family, your colleagues, until that good customer service is being spread all over your area or all over the regions, okay? The second important objective is the quality of end product, okay? So that's included in the scope of operations management because who, what business ba ang ayaw ng good quality ng end product? And who, who among the customers ba ang ayaw ng good quality of the end product? Say, for example, you are in a mall looking for a blouse or a pants. You always look for good quality. Sometimes, of course, you also would look for good price. But if you get a good price with a better quality, so that is customer delight, right? No customer uh, will want something that is lower than what she or he is expecting from the producers. Okay, so the quality of the end product is an important objective. The next one is reduced waste or rework. One of the concepts of total quality management, so that is TQM, is doing the right things right the first time and every time. Okay, and it can be achieved by building the skills, the knowledge, the techniques that are involved in producing the products and in that services. So you reduce the cost when you have that kind of objective. The next one is optimum inventory levels, okay? So we work with minimum possible inventory levels. Practice JIT right? Just in time inventory. It's also a Japanese uh, concept, JIT. 
this is is this is strategy is to increase efficiency and decrease waste by delivering inventory uh delivering uh, the goods or receiving goods only as you need it so you reduce inventory cost you reduce the space that you need for your inventory of the materials okay and then the next one is employee satisfaction we do not only satisfy the customers we satisfy the employees because they are the best resources employees the personals are the best assets okay ensure that our employees are happy working with us fulfill their desires and needs at work encourage a win-win situation all parties are satisfied the owners the stakeholders the employees and the customers yun po yung tinatawag nating win-win situation the next one is maximizing productivity it's maximum productivity so for me there are three things in order to have maximum productivity the first one is maximize efficiency okay stop wasting your precious time at work during working hours playing games in your gadgets or going into social media in your mobile phones those are working time okay examine how you spend time with your workload before complaining of overwork or uh, uh, a greater workload than your other colleagues okay the second one is ensure employees accept and appreciate challenges of the tax kasi pag uh, gustong gusto ng mga employees nating gawin yung task mas nagiging productive tayo even in the school di ba if we have favorite subjects like if you if you your favorite subject is mathematics you always study math right sometimes you ignore those subjects were in medyo weakness tayo need for improvement kasi wala tayong encouragement just the same as the setup in the workplace in the operations management the employees should have the ability to accept those kind of challenges and tasks and the third one is ensure you provide time when to hit the reset button okay so the need to recharge the need to disconnect that's why some companies or i think a greater percentage of the organizations are now into team building company outings uh, town hall meetings in order to at least give relaxation to the employees that is part of achieving maximum productivity okay and then i think that's my last objective concern for environment protection uh, this has become one of the foremost concerns of the business community worldwide ba yung iba nga they patronize products because that the manufacturer of that products has concerns in the protection of the environment okay so sometimes those uh, uh, labels they promote their products because sometimes they use they will tell the the customers that they use uh, uh, secondary packaging that are not virgin materials they consider the reuse of the other packaging materials so that is a good way also to promote and uh, there are several ways to have concern for environment protection so practice the four R's: reduce, reuse, recycle, and recovery. Okay, and in reducing, uh, simple things that you can even apply at home: turn off the light when you don't need it, conserve water, use glasses when you brush your teeth. Okay, just the same if you are in a workplace. Uh, bring that culture into the workplace and uh, be uh, a part of the employees who have concerns for the environment protection. 
And our employers have concern for environment protection, tayo rin na employees should also have concern for environment protection. Okay? So with that, I would like to go to the management system standards, okay? Uh, this can be new to some of you, but uh, it's more on the system at uh, the standards being provided by ISO. So ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. So it is not an acronym, di ba? Kasi kung if it is an acronym, it is IOS, International Organization for Standardization. So we pronounce it ISO. It is not an acronym. It comes from the Greek word ISOS, which means equal. Uh, like another example is isosceles. Uh, in our geometry, isosceles triangle wherein there are two sides equal. So isos coming from the word iso. Another example is isotopes, the same number of protons, although they have different number of neutrons. Kaya we, we pronounce it iso. So one of the uh, the most common management system standard is ISO 9001. Now we have the 2015 version. It's quality management systems. Okay. Oh, by the way, ISO is an international federation of, nas of national standard bodies called ISO member studies. And Philippines is one of the member bodies represented by BPS, Bureau of Philippine Standards, before it was known as Bureau of Product Standards, uh, part of the Department of Trade and Industry. Okay, so... ISO management system help organization improve their performance by specifying the requirements that organizations should continuously implement. And 9001, the 2015 version, is an example of that management standard. Okay, it has a specific requirements for quality management system. And the aim of this system is to provide products and services that meet customer and regulatory and uh, sometimes also statutory reg regulations or requirements and also enhancing customer satisfaction. So you know, you will notice that is the, the purpose of the ISO 9001 quality management system is aligned with the objectives and the components of the operation management. Okay, other management system standards is ISO 14001, also the 2015 version. It's more on environmental concerns. So it's being practiced by our DENR and other regulatory agencies that are related to environmental requirements. And Another one is 27001, the 2013 version. It's information technology techniques and information security management system. Now that we are into quarantine protocols, we are all using this medium, the information communication technology, like what we are doing now. We are into webinars for the safety for our protection for the coronavirus. But as you may know, this kind of techniques and security and information uh, technology has also its own uh, management system. It's the 27,000 2013. And since there are also other specific uh, specific management system standards, there are standards specific for medical services, there are standards specific for petroleum. So a lot of management system standards that you may see in the uh, ISO website. But I will focus and I will share something about the 9001, the clause 8 of the standard, particularly or specifically uh, the requirements on the operation. Okay, this is new to you because you are still not in the workforce, but 
if you will look into these elements, I have discussed this already in our uh, components and the scope of operations management. So the first element of clause 8 is operation planning and control. Okay, so if you are listening, planning and control are part of our components of OM. Okay, requirements for products and services. So requirements is the second component that I think, I think the second component, uh, the third component that I discussed earlier, design and development of products and services. So it's more on the processes. Okay, so it's transforming the input output model. The basic input output model is included in this element, design and development of products and services. Then the next one are control of externally provided processes, products and services. So those are uh, processes that are being supplied to us by external bodies, say the suppliers, the suppliers of packaging material, the suppliers of the machine, the suppliers of uh, the 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 suppliers of your uh, manpower. If you do not have the HR into in your organization and you just uh, look for manpower staffing agency, uh, if you have a test that you that you need for your products, you you send them to laboratories or different testing centers. So those are called uh, externally provided services. Okay. And the fifth element is production and service provision. Okay. Which is entirely the def definition of operation management. We provide products and services. The sixth one is the release of products and services. So these are more on the requirements of how are you going to issue or how are you going to deliver your products? How are you going to deliver your services to the customer? That's 8.6. And the last one is control of non-conforming outputs. Okay. It's included in the component and control. And what are non-conforming outputs? Those are deviations from the specifications, deviations from the standard, okay? Because if you are into ISO, there is a verb there, shall. If the word shall, the verb shall is included in the standard, it is mandatory, okay? It is mandatory. Say, for example, in the standard for uh, operation planning and control, in that element, there is a requirement, an example one is the organization shall have a planning uh, team to oversee the operation. So that means uh, it is required, it is mandatory to create a planning team to oversee the operation. And when there is no team that is created, that is a non-conforming to the, strand, to the standard requirements. Kaya meron tayong control of non-conforming outputs. Okay? So, yun po yung uh, operation management in a nutshell from my experience. And uh, this is the second part. I, I call this my journey to becoming an operations manager. Okay. So I will share to you my career story. Uh, I started working as a chemical laboratory analyst in a pharmaceutical industry, engaged in the manufacture of intravenous solutions or the IV solution, or commonly known layman term is dextrose. Okay, uh, fresh from taking the board exam, I was immediately exposed to three different uh, rotational work shifts. The first shift starts at 6 o'clock in the morning and ends at 2 p.m. Then the second starts at 2 p.m. and ends at 10 in the evening. And the last shift starts at 10 in the evening up to 6 o'clock in the following morning. Okay. I call that phase as 
the baby steps of my career. I am part of the rank and file group. Okay. The term now, that was the term before, rank and file ka. Okay. But the term now commonly used by organizations are associates. So if you are an associate, basically you are uh, in the lower part of the organizational chart and the role is more of a team player. Okay. Sometimes you work independently, sometimes you work in a team. So, uh, because if you are in a team, working together will achieve more of the task assigned to you. Okay? And uh, it is also the time when uh, you will realize the difference between the academe and the industry. Because for us chemists, we study a lot of chemistry subjects in the university. And then when you go into the workforce, into the industry, you would realize that maybe two to three chemistry subjects are only of use. Okay, the rest would be, okay, sometimes you may look at it, sometimes more often you may not. So more learnings in the workplace. And when you are into that phase, we need to be good team players. Not necessarily the best, but we need to be good team, team players. Because that's the part where you learn more and at the same time earn. Earn something for you, earn something to be shared to your parents or your siblings. Okay? And then it's also the time when you interact with different professions, people of different ages. So sometimes you call the, the seniors are ate or tita, but that is not uh, encouraged in the uh, professional field kasi wala naman daw tayong sa, sa bahay. So we should call each other miss or plainly your name. Sometimes they call you by your uh, initials. So for me, they call me M-A-M -M, or sometimes mom. O talaga namang mom kasi M-A-M. -M, okay. So that's the time when uh, you need to be into the team even if you are quite shy because it is the first step of the ladder in going uh, in your career, okay? Uh, I enjoyed my first job, okay? During our time, mahalata naman yung edad ko, no? But during our time, our parents would always tell us that to be good, to work better, so that you can stay in the company for so long. Unlike now, where the young generation of uh, employees hop from one industry to the other, and unfortunately, after two years of working in this pharmaceutical industry, when uh, there is a change of technology in the packaging from the bottle dextrose to collapsible plastics, uh, the technology requires to retrench employees because they need lesser workforce. But during my time, the labor unions are also very aggressive suddenly there were there was labor strike actions okay which to make the story short uh later ended with the company declaring closure so what happens we all become jobless okay so i'm back to job hunting again and then maybe i think six months been on jobless after that then I joined an adhesive and plant manufacturing company as an assistant chemist. I stayed for 10 years in that company and I was assigned to different posts. It's still a team player. Different posts in research and development, in quality control, in production. But when I was already in the production, the management sent me to different leadership seminars. Okay? and a series of total quality management seminars. So doon ko na naintindihan yung mga doing right things right the first time and every time. Okay? And then I call that phase of my career 
as the start of being a team leader, okay? I'm also happy with my job, okay? And uh, I feel I'm uh, stepping another step, stepping another layer of the ladder, rather. And it gives me more benefits. It gives me more perks. So I encourage to do more, okay? But of course, with the responsibilities comes stress, okay? Especially the team leaders, I think, is the most difficult stage of my career. Sometimes extending uh, work hours, even at home. But it's difficult to have to be in between your subordinates and your manager. Okay, it's between the associates and your manager. But the job is also fulfilling. Okay, so after 10 years in that company, I decided to resign as I want to learn more. Uh, basically, not management skills but to learn more of my chemistry. Kasi parang focus lang ako sa adhesive and paints, and I know chemistry is a wide subject. So feeling ko, I still need to learn more. So I resigned and joined later uh, a, an environmental non-government organization as a chemist in their waste exchange program. So in this organ NGO, the pay is not that high compared to being the team leader or the supervisor in my previous job, but it's more fulfilling because you are part of the sustainable environmental protection. I don't have subordinates under me or associates under me, but I coordinate with other chemists of other companies who handles the waste. So it's, uh, in essence, you are both a team player and a team leader. So it's just a one-year project contract. And before the contract ends, I got a job as a chemical lab supervisor, which is my start of being a team manager. So it's the lower level of management, okay? And then... In this kind of organization, I now learn the different management system standards. So when I transferred into a private testing laboratories like SGS and Intertech Philippines, as mentioned in the introduction, this is where I learned the different levels of management and the different skills that you need to have in those different levels. So I am also lucky that the company, the organization provided me a lot of seminars and trainings, both locally and overseas, in order to develop all my skills and later become an operations manager of the laboratory. Okay, so of course, as we go up in the management ladder, the pay gets higher and higher. Of course, the taxes also become higher, diba? And after some years of experience as operations manager, there, will, there comes a time when I realize that I also need to go back to, my, to the hierarchy of my needs. Ando na ba ako sa top hierarchy? Do I still need to work? Or do I still to do I still uh, need to learn more, or should I retire earlier than the age of sixty or the age of sixty-five in the government? So eventually, after analyzing or evaluating the pros and cons, I retire at the age of fifty-five. Okay, but somebody told me that there is no such thing as full retirement. True enough, in less than six months after I got a freelance work, happier times now, less stress, sometimes lesser income but more free time for myself and for my families. So that's my humble story 
of becoming an operations manager. And becoming an operations manager, you are into operations management. Of course, you all wanted to aspire of becoming an operations manager someday. So I have cited here some important roles of operations manager. You always, the first one is you always provide leadership to the organization, okay? They always rely on you. If you are the OM, feeling like you a problem solver, you always lead. Of course, you give uh, works, you delegate works to your associates, but they also, they always look up to you as the leader. They cannot come to the president <laughs> directly. They go to the operations manager, okay? The second one is you're part of the policy maker. You are part of the decision maker and you are considered a strategic planner, okay? And oftentimes, in doing so, uh, the plans that you make or the decisions that you make are not acceptable to all. But it's part of the role of being an operations manager. The idea is to decide what is right and what is good for all. Okay? You always improve the system. The Kaizen concept is always there. Okay, and, and that is not the role only of an operations manager. If you are still on the first step of the ladder, a team player, you always also improve the system. Okay, responsibility includes human resource management, asset management, and cost management. Okay, one of your supervisors will come to you, wala po akong tao. I cannot do this, I cannot do that. The other supervisor will tell to you, Ma'am, sir, naubusan tayo ng packaging materials, asset management. And then your boss will tell you, oh, your, your cost is getting higher, higher and higher. So you are answerable to all these three functions. The responsibility includes these three functions. And before I close, the, P, the five key areas to look at are people, core operations, budgets, delivery of the goods or services, and strategy. The operations managers are often the glue that holds the organization together. Okay? And I would like to close my presentation with this saying, statement from Confucius, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. Thank you and Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Okay, I think that is it, Zell. Yeah. Thank you for that very inspiring and knowledgeable talk with you, Miss Mina Mercado. You, thank sure, you too. Yes, I'm and sure the welcome. students learned a lot from you. And some of them might have a few questions to ask you. Po. So okay. for that reason, we are now open for questions. Audiences, our viewers and students. You can now write and comment your questions down on the chat box. Do not forget to add your name or nickname and your university para alam namin kung sino sino ang mga active ngayon dito. We'll also be receiving questions coming from our Facebook Live, so ask away. Ayan. Thank you though, Puma, for your You're welcome. Speech. They learned a lot, I'm sure of it. Thank you too. Hope it's not boring. Ano po? Ang dami namin natutunan. Um, starting from the managing of the business, the testing of the product, budgets, ayan. So yung students natin, kung may mga questions kayo regarding sa mga topics na na-discuss ni ma'am, just go ahead and ask. And while we wait po for the questions, and thank you ulit ma'am, so very inspiring po yung part na sinabi niya na right price, right place, and right time. Napaka-impactful yeah. kasi very short but very precise sa mga pag-decide pag natin sa everyday life natin. No? 
Ayan, we're getting some of the questions na po. A question po from Ronella from RTU Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Jobs inclined po sa operations management. Sorry, I did not get that. Asks po from by Ronella from RTU Bonnie. Jobs, jobs inclined po ba ang operations management? Yeah, and uh, it's a wide, it's a wide subject. So you can be able to, you will be able to get different job functions. And uh, you will be able to uh, get a large share of the job market if you are into operations management. Yes. More questions so is coming. What are the characteristics of being operations manager? Ayan. What are the characteristics? Oh. oh, of course, given the roles of the operations manager, uh, if you are, uh, if first and foremost pala, if you go into the workforce, you need to have the skills, the knowledge, and the attitude, okay? So in order to become a good operations manager, you develop the skills, okay? Skills uh, can be developed through uh, self-learning or through attending webinars like this, or more exposure to the industry. Of course, the knowledge, it's the, the, those are the learnings that you get from the academe, because if you are in that, because the basics of operations management is in the academe. Actually, during our time, there is no operation management course, okay? Mm -hmm. So as I have said earlier, the first part, I do not have formal education, but my idea is to always learn every day, some, learn something every day, okay? So, and then the attitude, yun ba yung tinatanong natin? So, enough strength, okay? Kailangan resilient. Kailangan masipag, di ba? Kailangan uh, adaptable to any situations, can adjust to different environments, to different personalities. The leadership styles will come. Actually, yung ginagawa nyo ngayon is uh, uh, part of gaining leadership styles. Okay, did I answer your your question right? Satisfied yes, ba? Yes, I think na-answer nyo ba? Yun? In choosing a decision, ang bilis, hindi ko. <laughs> Can you ito, see? Ang dami na lumabas. Yes, um, ito muna kay Miss Joanna Torres from, mm -hmm. from Rizal Technological University. Ma'am, ano po yung mga kadalasan na struggles and circumstances na nai-experience ng isang operations manager? Okay. Ang kadalasang struggles ay kung uh, shortage of resources, okay? Especially kung late ang deliveries ng supplies. And ang pinakamahirap struggles ay when people in the organization resign. Pinakamahirap i-handle ang people as part of the resources because they are mobile. So, when you train them, they get all the learnings and then eventually, of course, they wanted to also look for other opportunities or higher pay. So they leave the organizations and, and you go back to uh, the first stage again, training new employees. Okay. Sometimes you can get employees who are already well trained with those kind of experiences. But of course, the cost is higher. So... Uh, it's the risk that the management needs to take, whether uh, you will get somebody who is already well-trained, you will no longer train her or him with a higher pay, or you are going to get somebody who is a newly grad or with 
six months or one year experience and then you will subject that personnel again to different trainings yun yung mga struggles people management is the most difficult for me because they are mobile the others are easier to control okay yes thank you ma'am we have you, another Dave. question po from d from mm -hmm. Rizal technological university Alec. Do you have any doubts, ma'am, leaving your previous job, considering you are already on top? Um, actually, no. Because it's a matter of goals. Okay? It's a matter of goals. Maybe the only, the first one, well, the first pharmaceutical company, because I do not have control. The company declared closure. But for the other resignations or transfer of companies, it's more of uh, your own goals. It's more of uh, what you need to achieve more. But it is also uh, a challenge because you are going into another environment. So it's uh, adjusting again to different personalities and different systems and we have another interesting question for dito in choosing a decision for what could be the point to know whether it's the best solution or not <laughs> okay that's a good question okay yeah. in a, based on experience i always list the positive and the negative of that situation when the positive outweighs the negatives, that's my decision. Lagi akong ganon. And of course, since meron pa namang owner or the higher up, you you also coordinate with your higher management. And Sorry. from MJ from RTU Pasig. What improvements can be made to achieve productivity goals? What improvements can be made to achieve productivity goals? First, brainstorm. Okay. Get the minds of your associates, of your colleagues in the department or in the business. Because more heads are always better than one. Okay. Second, after brainstorming, pick the most convenient and most uh, the, the most advantageous that will give to that situation. Okay? And then, of course, you always pray. Say a little prayer every time you make a decision. Yeah. Siguro one last question, ma'am. Mapas ka marami nagtatanong dito. Oo, oh, oh, nga eh. Um... Uh, ayan, from Angelica Carag from mm -hmm. FEU Diliman mm -hmm. can I ask for what is your most challenging experience in the workplace how did you manage to overcome difficulties concerning that po? oh ano ba ang most the most challenging experience is being uh a team leader because it is you are in between your associates and your manager okay sometimes you 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 un there are times that you understand the needs of your associates or your subordinates but you cannot you cannot justify it no matter justifications that you give to your boss Hindi niya tanggapin. I think that those are the most challenging parts. When you wanted to help your subordinate, your associates, but you cannot do something because the higher ups do not want to listen with your suggestions. Yon. I think that's the, the, the most difficult. So from there, how do I handle it? It's more of, sabi ko nga kanina, Trying to be in a win-win situation, okay? Trying to approach over and over again the boss 
and then trying to understand what the boss says, and then trying to give that kind of uh, statements of the boss to your associates so that they will also understand. Try to be in a win-win situation every time. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, for that enlightenment. Siguro last two questions kasi super interested po talaga sila sa topic na na-discuss nyo. No? So from Emery Arciaga from LPU Manila, as efficiency and productivity increase, how do you ensure quality is maintained po? So parang nasagot na ata. Mm -mm. Because, di ba, kasama sa discuss, oh. it's always quality greater than quantity. Yeah. Diba? Laging ganon. If you cannot balance it, it's quality greater than quantity. Then last question po. Aside from your job, ma'am, have you invested to other things like business? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, this, I don't have, uh, I don't have my own business, although I have invested in some stocks, but hindi naman ganun karami. Uh, I do not strive to be rich. <laughs> Hindi kasi yun yung goal ko. I strive to enjoy life, be happy. Uh -oh. And uh, presently, yun nga, I am having some freelance technical consultancy. So, still earning something while enjoying life. Hindi yata ako nahilig doon. <laughs> And so thank you so much, ma'am. Let's thank all you, give Miss Mina Mercado a cheerful virtual clap naman dyan. Thank okay. you, Miss Mina, thank for you. sharing your stories and for perplexing knowledge with us. Okay, yes. thank you. And in return po, we would like to present you a certificate of appreciation. Allow uh -huh. me to read the quotation. And we present you po a certificate of appreciation from Miss Mina Mercado in tribute for your willingness to share your wisdom and expertise as a speaker in the seminar entitled Lakbay OM, The Nature of Operations Management, given this fifth day of September 2020 on Microsoft Teams. Signed by Jimena Therese B. Villarreal, the president of OMSA, and Mr. Leonard C. Kanamo of CPA MBA, the advisor of OMSA. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for yes. that certificate. Ka. Thank you, It is my honor and uh, hopefully you learn something from me. Once again, a positive reaction for our first speaker. Maraming maraming salamat po, ma'am. We hope to see more of you soon and stay safe po. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sabi nga, no? Uh, sabi nga ni Ms. Pina, continuous improvement is important. No? Sana marami tayong natutunan ngayon. Sana we took note of everything dahil it will really help us in our career journey. So, okay pa ba mga viewers natin? Do you want to learn more, students? Please type one if you want to learn more. Gusto pa ba mga students natin? Viewers natin. Isang energy level check naman dyan. Please type 1 kung okay na okay pa kayo. Ayan. So, okay na okay pa ang mga students and viewers natin. So, as we take a moment of a breather, sana ready na tayo for our second speaker. No? Kasi first speaker pa lang ay madami na tayong manalaman at natutunan. So if you're all ready na, let us all welcome the second speaker, the Operations Director of Ange Hill International and the Creative Manager of the Mind Group, Mr. David Simon Reyes. Hey guys. Good afternoon. How everybody doing? How are you guys doing this together? It's been wild, crazy, challenging, and just being new to all of us. 
I just want to thank you guys for coming up to the house. I know that I am very much in a community watch as much as it is for most of our teachers and professors. If I can't wait for my time, it is quite like you have one another that's five I guess. Okay, everyone here. I just want to tell you that I appreciate your effort. And once again, maraming salamat sa pagdalo at pagsubaybay dito sa ating webinar. So I really am glad to, to be here to just, you know, generally chill with you guys and talk about operations management. Honestly, I never thought about, you know, speaking in, a, in an event like this, because when you speak about operations management, technically, it tends to really be intimidating. Because when you speak about it, Maybe it's because it's really broad or it's just plain, I don't know, vague. But you know what? Everything is an operation. Like look around you, the way you take your degree or your strand, the way you organize your online selling. Operation is the entire process behind every certain task or goal, big or small. But it is how you manage it that really matters the most. So before I start, I just want to thank OMSA, especially Tarmi Dokot, who invited me to be a guest speaker. Just so you know, guys, she was very formal in the way she wrote her emails to me. So formal that even I, a corporate executive, got intimidated. Funny thing was, I had to look her up online and try to stalk her in Facebook and LinkedIn or whatnot because I just want to verify, was I speaking to a student or was I speaking to a dean? Because, you know, the way I reply to my emails is very casual and just, you know, very basic. Because that's how I am as a leader or as a boss. I'm more of like a kuya. So I try to really um, talk to you in a language that most of us use on a daily basis. So the funny thing here is I didn't realize that all this time she was in my Facebook friends list. I don't know how it happened, but yeah. So I say unang akala ko she taught me I was in the FEU alumni database, but I guess that's not the case. So to introduce myself, my name is David Simon Reyes. I'm an alumnus of Far Eastern University, Manila, and it is my great honor to speak to my fellow Tamaraos and impart my knowledge accordingly. So um, just so we can be more familiar with each other, I'll be showing photos of mine back in my day at FEU Manila. Crazy how time flies, and it's really humbling to see how God could take a simple man like I was to where I am now. Still a simple man, but wiser. So, I'm a tourism management major. I took it for four years while I was a working student for Starbucks for two years. Prior to that, I was also part of the student council for two years. So, I guess it's safe to say that I like getting busy. So to all freshmen or senior high here, especially for those who are newly enrolled into the Tamarau community, we want to welcome you and we want to affirm you that you made the right choice, I guess. <laughs> Joke lang, but on a serious note, starting in FE was really a blessing for me. When I got here in the Philippines back then around 10 years ago, or 11 or 12, I'm not really sure, I grew up because abroad, so when I got back here, I am not really familiar with the school system or the culture or whatnot. Ang alam ko lang is UAAP. So basically, I tried all the schools. However, USD and FEU were the only two sound choices for me at that time. So you're gonna be asking me, Yo, David, why not USD, man? Why not the Tigers? Why not go stay and stuff like that? Well. Why did you choose FEU and go Reka Reka Suma FEU? Honestly, at that time, I didn't know. For me, it was like choosing between apples and mangoes. They're both the same fruit, just a different flavor. So it was late around my second year or third year in college where I discovered why. And to my discovery, it wasn't because of my preference, but it was a matter of purpose. I don't think I'll be the man I am now if I didn't study in FEU. 
with the community, the dynamic environment, and the urban reality that FDU possesses, I don't think I could have the same development if I studied anywhere else, honestly. FEU was the environment where God jump started my journey in becoming a leader. So for that, I am grateful and I am proud to be a time around. So please, as we go on the topic, write in the chat below kung bakit FEU na pili nyo. I may not know why, pero hindi aksidente na nandito ka bilang time around. So to set expectations lang to my talk, I want to be as casual as I could be. I know this operations thing can can be too technical, so I'll do my best to make things relatable and simple to understand. And also, I want interaction because in real life, that's what I will be doing. When we TikTok time together, you know, doing whoa or whatever. So <laughs> yeah, I'm such a people. So I just have to make things a lot simpler and arguably better. As I start my topic, I'm going to tell you guys my journey and the lessons I've learned which eventually led me to becoming an effective operations leader. So um, my first job back then was becoming a barista in Starbucks. I was still studying, yet I took the part time. I was there for two years while taking full units or full load in college. So was it difficult? Hell yeah. Was it exhausting? Absolutely. Was it fun? Yes, it was. But was the pay good? Well, <laughs> I have free coffee. But yeah, Starbucks was a great starting job for me because the culture of the company is very much invested in learning and development. This was where it all started. It was my first job, my first mistakes, my first achievements, my first taste of the real world. And trust me, it wasn't at all pleasant talaga. It was messy. You know, um, it was really, really bad and it was really, really good at the same time. But this was where I learned how retail management worked. I got to understand how Starbucks does it and the customer service they had was just so impeccable. So overall, Starbucks was not the best at salary rates, but they're very intentional with benefits. So I stayed there for two years. Then eventually I transferred to the IT world. I became a solutions architect. Basically, I was the one who was trying to figure out the product that is most suitable for the client's requirements and needs and how we can modify or tailor fit according to the way they work or the way they want it to be. So basically, my job was all about software. It's about making the process of huge companies to go all digital in, mo in the most efficient and effective way possible. We call these things solution. So for example, the company in company mo. You're losing track of your stocks, of your employees. You don't know how your brand is doing. You couldn't monitor your sales anymore. Your, um, your, your finances are all over the place. And that's where we actually step in and try to talk to you. So my job back then was to go to CEOs and tap management executives and, you know, get to know their process and how they do things and, you know, try to find ways on how we can help them in making their process digital and and hopefully eventually closing my deal with them. So this is where I got a taste of how huge companies work. And it actually felt like I was in the Wall Street, I mean Wall Street, the Wall Street of the Philippines. Because technically I was, you know, I was working with big corporations back then and you know it, it was intimidating, yes, but over time you just get used to it. So after becoming a solutions architect, that was my second job. The showbiz industry came to picture and I was a former actor and a commercial model for quite some time. But then I was really I wasn't really all into that. So una masaya, so una fulfilling and you know, you enjoy the fame, you enjoy basically all the attention. But I wanted to do something with my corporate value. So eventually I instead of just focusing on Papa Pogi and you know, becoming vain. I focus on the business side or the, the operational side of how the industry works in the filming and advertising industry. Studying that by myself and just observing to other people, I get to have a job called creative manager to the mind group production, which is now closed. <laughs> so back then we were making films, advertisements, 
social media videos for a variety of clients. And my job was to make sure that our team is not only fulfilling the needs of our clients, but also exceeding their expectations. So I was working with directors, with DOPs, editors, production staffs, and yeah, of course, actors and models as well. So this is where I first learned, or I further learned how to lead teams to achieve a common goal. So the funny thing was in terms of leading small teams, I, I actually love it because it's much hands-on and much intimate. So then Philippine Airlines came. I became one of their cabin crew members. It was a fun job. It was far from easy, but was it worth it? To be honest with you, sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. So people think I say about the glitz and glamour of the job, but they don't know the, the toxicity behind the job. So your sleeping, you know, your sleeping pattern is always broken. It's never going to be fixed if your if your career is, you know, in the aviation industry. So you have to abide to a lot of strict rules and regulations, and you have to continuously study and memorize a lot of things. And by a lot, I mean a lot. So imagine, um, siguro yung book na ganyang hakapal, literally, ganyang hakapal, ganyang kahaba, we need to memorize that cover to cover and all the items in it. And not only memorize it, but understand it and actually do it when the time comes because all of those things are about safety, security, and service, and it's just a standard. So overall, it's very strict in the industry, and sometimes you know the stress levels can go high. Because if you fail to answer safety and security questions once, you know before you guys actually fly, I say it's called pre-departure briefing. Like you guys actually, um, or pre-flight check or pre-flight briefing, whatever you call it. It's it's um, it's a time where all of you and your crew members for that flight, um, your fellow cabin crew members and your pilot, will actually meet up and talk about the flight and you know discuss about the weather and the flight details and how many passengers or whatnot. So after that, because I make Q and A portion just to make sure that everyone knows what we're doing. So the senior cabin crew will ask you several questions about safety and security. And you have to answer it. Sometimes word for word, sometimes basta magets mo thought. But then kapag hindi ka nakasagot or mali mali yung sagot mo, tapos puro critical questions, tapos ano mo yun, um, puro wala kang sagot, the senior cabin crew or the pilot can drop you off the flight right there and it's your fault. You know, kapag ganun, um, matik, wala ka ng flight for the day. Kasi, mangyayari dyan, um, you will be called to file a report on what happened. And basically, ang investigation will be, it's going to be your fault for not knowing or missing out the important things about, about you know, safety and security. And David, bakit ganun ka strict? Because the aviation industry can be the least forgiving when it comes to safety. So, what was my favorite part of the job? Well, basically, the uniform. I love the uniform. I love rocking that out. But then, you know, eventually, I wasn't going to be there for the long run. <laughs> so, my current company right now, which is Angeli Hilton International, got in contact with me and recruited me for a management position assigned to operations. So, my company is the one who created and is handling the brands of Baby Roll Philippines, if you know it, First Choice, and Jack's Baby Company. These are baby, these are baby product brands, okay? And we supply to SM, Lazada, Metro Gaisano, Landmark, and a whole lot more. Eventually, my job evolved and God really made things happen and the company grew with me as time went by. It was a surprising journey, to be honest, and it's one of those jobs that I never thought that I would be, you know, genuinely good at, but I guess when you depend and rely on God, he will really exceed your expectations. So overall, that's a brief summary of what my journey was, and now I'll be laying out some of the things I learned. Yes, the entire time, Nina, it was all introduction. Pa lang. So yeah, let's dive into it. So Ikaw, in this new normal, um, probably you have an online store. I mean, come on, most of us have right now, even though I have my own online store. So if you're having an online store or you're a team leader, 
in some of your business or you're a boss or a corporate executive or you're just an employee or an associate of an organization or company, here's the first lesson and it's pretty common sense. Number one, communication is vital. Parang relationship lang yan. Nuts. Mga lockdown lovers. Just kidding though. But yeah, I mean, the pansik ko lang. Ang daming, ang daming tao ngayon nagiging sila nung, nung lockdown, no? Nagiging sila. And I'm like, what happened, you know? <laughs> but yeah, um, it is true. Communication is vital not only in work, but also in relationship. So, in work kasi, it's made of a lot of people. And in work, and there's people, community is there. So, it has to have relationship. So it is always important to be mindful about the way you relay your information and also in the way you receive information. As human beings, guys, we all have a deep longingness to be heard and to be understood and to be valued as well. Lahat tayo gusto natin marinay. Lahat tayo we want to, to be affirmed, right? Now the question is, how can I make my customers, my teammates, my bosses, or perhaps even my subordinates or people under me feel that. Number one, or letter, letter A perhaps, the attitude within. So you have to be comfortable with them. I know it can be intimidating sometimes, but setting the vibe can matter a lot in the long run. Have you ever had that friend that parang you know, uh, pag wala yung tropa mong yun, ang lungkot ng barkada. Diba? You always have that barkada ka lang. Or, if naman is, you, you had that malanting tropa. You know, I had that in college, na parang, lahat lang yan, mo. Parang, you know, whether guy or girl, uh, man, I, I, I had those friends. And right now, they're really mature people, so I'm really proud of them. But, you know, they set the vibe, they set the tone. Or may mga professor ako na talagang, uh, alam mo yun, um, nakakatakot, terror. Pagpasok pa lang, everyone sits straight and everyone's just scared because they set the vibe and the tone. So the energy you have, so, so in the same way, the energy that you carry is nakakahawa yan. Back then in Starbucks, how do we call our customers? So when you go to Starbucks, how do they call you? First they call you by mom and sir, right? But when they ask for your name, have you ever thought, why we ask for your name? So is it because so you can write my name in the cup and shout ice grande extra shot upside down additional hazelnut syrup nine fat with whipped cream caramel macchiato for charm? Just a long drink, but yes, it exists. So is that it, or is it because we want to break our social barrier? There's a reason why we have our name tags sa apron namin because a customer will be a lot more comfortable to say their name when they get to know yours first. Now, what do you do when you get the customer's name? Simply lang, you use it. You start talking to your customer with his or his, with his or her given name, okay? It increases familiarity and breaks down social barrier. I do this even until now. You know, not bilang barista, but bilang customer. So, mga nabubuntahan kong establishment, whether hotel, restaurants, or whatnot. So, every time I go there, even sa fast food like Jollibee, I thank the people. Like, for example, someone's cleaning up my table, I try to look for their name tag. And, for example, uh, James. Yo, James, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Or, kapag nasa sa share ako, si at sa Mercury Drag, yung babaeng kong tees. You know, I, I, I try to look for their name and, like, and call them by it. Um, for example, um, ano ba mabak ni ng babae? Um, cat. Cat, uh, can I have this, this, and that? So, cat, thank you. Uh, salamat, cat. So, as you can see, it's much more less formal and much more casual when you call each other by the first name. So, it's really, you know, it's really something that's also rewarding because sa mga restaurants na palagi kong pinupuntahan, I know the call, I know the waiters already, I know even the chef. I call them by their name and you know whenever I get there I get automatic VIP treatment not because I paid for them not because I'm famous but because I treated them like decent human beings because they are and that's what we miss a lot you know so the same way can be applied to your team members there's a lot of times I said that we tend to be a lot 
stiffer or we're too formal in a way that things go that we forget that, hey, we're here to work as a team, okay? But also be wise. You can be friends with your colleagues and your bosses, even to your professors. And I'm going to drop a professor back in FEU. But you should also, you know, keep in mind that, hey, you should be respectful and professional at all times. So listen and speak with enthusiasm, intention, and pure sincerity. Letter B, or sub point number two, a simple gesture. If you have teammates or have or you have employees, even to your boss, right? Always be quick to thank them for just about everything, big or small. You have no idea how big of an impact the words thank you is. Affirm each other and make sure everyone feels that they are seen and not taken for granted. Wow. Wala pang hugot yun. <laughs> Slide lamp. Joke. Joke. Sorry. But seriously though, kidding aside, if you're a leader or you're a boss or you own a company or for example, ikaw yung presidente ng team mo or ng class mo, you set the tone. You set that culture of gratitude and respect. If you're an employee naman, take initiative and do it even when others don't. If you're an online seller, thank your customers genuinely and not sarcastically, even when it's very tempting because you know a lot of customers tend to be rude and just hot-headed. But because overall, you have to remember what you do or how you handle these kinds of situations doesn't reflect the people around you. It reflects who you are instead. And oh, I try to be patient as much as I can and be kind. So to your boss, man, I'm not saying to be subsep or to be his, his or her favorite, but it's just a matter of showing that you value your job and the opportunity that you're given, even when sometimes you don't feel like it. Thank them even when you're the one doing the service, favor, or the task. Even the colleagues you don't like, you should thank them even when they deserve it or when they don't. You see, if there's one thing that I really learned in life in general, is this. Kindness always wins. Now, sub point number three. Four letters. Organize, please. Hmm. Now, what do I mean by that? There's a lot of people who have trouble in organizing their thoughts and effectively communicating their ideas or messages. My girlfriend, personally, is one example, and sometimes we fight a lot about it. And that's okay, because that's what love is all about. You work together as partners and not competitors. But yeah, even when you are communicating, Communicating information so work you have to take note that everyone has their own task everyone has their own dosage of stress for the day when you're going to speak to someone laying out the context of it is very very important you must be complete at the very least in the why what when where how if it's applicable because if not you're going to give a burden to someone to either assume information, making it inaccurate, or helping them figure it out for themselves, causing possible misunderstandings. All in all, it can have the possibility of delaying processes and disrupting the workflow. One example is one of my staff. She One day she just came to me like, David, yeah, I, my staff calls me by my first name to say I really want to implement that kind of culture. She came to me like, David, um, you know, Instagram sale, nothing he had at Mr. Pranav, that's our boss. And I was like, which one? You want to know, yung, yung, yung yung binigay mo sa akin, and she's gonna act, she's been acting like, you want to know, yung, yung one five, yung one five. Oh, no, man, I was confused because I can't really look at the numbers all the time, and I'm like, what's the name? And sabi niya, yung kay Angel Santos, and syempre ako naman, isip pa ako. So I went to my lap laptop and searched Angel Santos and yeah, she bought this item for one five. But what about it? You know? So the conversation went on and on for about 10 minutes by now with just one inquiry. I know, 
10 minutes is not much, but when you're doing a lot of tasks in the middle of the day, it does interrupt your workflow. All I'm saying is just like in life, not just in external, like on how you present yourself or how you fix your room or how you organize your Instagram feed, because I do that too. <laughs> you also have to be very mindful about the way you communicate. But then David, how? Simple, practice. Always stick in the context. Organize your thoughts in a way that it makes one direct sense. It's precise, specific, and straightforward if it needs to. Trust me, even me, I'm still working on it myself. So, D, or sub point number four, it's be graceful. It is important to be forgiving. So, sa mga ex nyo or sa mga people who did you wrong, it's very important to forgive people. Yes, it's hard, I know, but you know what? You know what's harder? It's not to hold grudges. See, when you forgive, you can just easily forgive people, right? Like, hey, napatawad na kita, pero sumaparin lo ko sa'yo, and everything else. I mean, forgiving is just the first part, pero the healing process, or the letting go process, okay, yeah. For the letting go process, it's it's really hard, you know? But, but because eventually, once you let go of that grudge, or if you don't let that go, that will affect you and hold you you know, hold you back from the joy of life. Marami yung kailangan mabae or even the lalaki na still, they're still bitter about their ex, they're still bitter about their past and that they're missing out on their current lives right now. Even sa business, even sa work, may mga taong that's parang, um, you know what, this company did me dirty, you know what, this this boss is just so bad and everything else and that person couldn't even enjoy his life right now because he keeps comparing it to his past. Like, bro, let it go, forgive, and just let it go. Don't hold the grudge anymore because it doesn't really imprison that person who hurt you, but it only imprisons you. Now, David, why am I telling you this? Because eventually it will affect the way you perform as a team, as partners, right? as, you know, even as a boss or guy being online seller. Forgive, don't hold grudges, but also be wise with the amount of trust you give. This goes to your customers, to your teammates, and to your employees or to your boss too, okay? So also in becoming graceful, you must know how to tailor fit the way you communicate and the way you talk to your colleagues, staffs, bosses, and even customers. Ako, the primary language ko talaga is English. Uh, it's, it's what I'm comfortable in using, pero kailangan ko minsan magtagalog. And yeah, sometimes and but yeah I still I'm a Filipino so I know how to speak and I know how to understand Tagalog. Yeah, uh, so I So kailan ko matuto mag-adjust sa aking mga sa aking mga anong cost? Anyway, but but yeah, um I have to learn how to adjust my gears because it's very important in achieving the best result. So it's important to be two things. Teachable and adaptable. The systems or the way you work may not be the same with the way your company or your boss or your employees work or talk. Para hindi yun ang ano mo, hindi ka hindi na nasanayan mo. Now, before anything else, what's the difference between the two? Adaptable and teachable. So teachable is when you can actually accept instruction or accept correction or feedback from another person, maybe a mentor or a teammate. It's when you're humble enough, regardless of your rank, of your position, to learn from other people. Adaptable, on the other hand, is the ability to observe and cope up with the way people work. You adapt, okay? It's about the, you blend yourself in the culture, not necessarily conform to it, but, you know, it's about um, making you yourself fit in without being fake. It's adjusting your strengths and your weaknesses to get the job done or get the information across in the best way possible. So teachable and adaptable. So remember when I was new sa company ko bilang operations director, I only have basic understanding of how companies work and how to lead a small team. But to work with different departments and make them operate as one in an industry I've never been on, 
that's entirely a different ballgame. I didn't know how I led this company to tripling their sales in a span of four months. It was some it was really something I knew that I couldn't deny that it was a God moment. He was really helping me out. But I also did my part, of course. And you know what my part was? Humility. When I got to the company, I took the initiative to not stay in the office chair, but to go and work in the field. I was in groceries like Super 8, Pure Gold, SM Supermarket, accompanying merchandisers to different branches as they restock the items. I carry the carton, I do the assembly. Para ako naging staff member. Sila lahat ng trabaho pinasok ko. Just so I could learn. I was in the warehouse figuring, figuring out how they work. And I was working constantly with the admin team to mentor me how the paper workflow was. I was asking a lot of questions to my fellow directors about how their current business process was. All these while I'm doing my job, which was to talk to key people and business partners to ensure that you know our goods and stacks were moving. So I did that for six months, and after that, everything was just overwhelming because now I get to work in the office here. But it doesn't mean that I'm slacking around, but it's just it just means that I I laid the foundation already for the company. So now I can work on something else to expand the business on a larger scale. So please remember this. Your talents, skills, abilities will take you somewhere in this life. Yes, but it is only your character which will take you far. So please focus on the right thing. There's always a balance to, to it, okay? So that's it for the first lesson. Now I'm moving on to the second lesson which will be more holistic. So the first one has been very specific and I really hope it helps you guys in the aspect of micromanagement. The first lesson, communication is very vital, especially in how you micromanage your team, your staff, or even the way you communicate with employees, with your fellow teammates, if you're among a customers more and also, it's, that's the first lesson. The second lesson, man, is focusing on the holistic side. It's the mindset, it's the way, it's what you do on a holistic manner, in a holistic way. The second lesson would be setting the vision. Sub point number one, or letter A, know your goal. When you're building a company or you're part of one, whether in operations man or other department, you must, you must have goals. Goals are things that you set up to achieve. But these goals that you have must resonate or complement with the goals of your teammates or business partners to achieve one common vision. So your goals must be aligned all together in one page to achieve one common vision. Everyone in your team must know the why behind the things that they do. Okay, it's very important. So as an operations director, I went to my boss, which is the owner of the company, and I asked him about his vision for the company. And I told him mine as well. So it was both great. So we combined our vision together. And from there, I set goals for each team to actually accomplish. And I worked with the managers themselves and planned out how are we going to you know, do these goals or how do we achieve these goals practically. So I was very much hands on with them. And you know, I wanted to make sure that every single employee knows the direction on where the company is heading to and always be open to hear their suggestions as well. Because Selena sa field, mas alam nila yan. So in this way, even the admin staff or even the HR feels validated that their work has value, that they are part of the company's journey overall. This, you have to include everyone. Because we're a team. No matter how small or mundane your role might be, trust me, we're not going to take anything or anyone for granted. So that's the mindset of it. Now, as an employee in a man, which who I was before and most of you would be someday, or some point in time probably, why is it important? So if you happen to work for a company or a boss who just commands you to do this and that, because trust me, at some point in life, you will come across those kind of bosses. But 
The question remains, how do you handle that? Well then, set a goal for yourself. You set the vision to your own work. Why does my boss need this report? What would he need it for? I'll do the best I can to make it look organized, straightforward, and just plain neat so that it can really help my boss. My vision for myself is that I'll be the employee that's the easiest to talk to. Even when I fail sometimes, I'll be the type to continuously learn. That's my vision for myself as an employee. Everyone wants to be the best, but how do you do that? Start with the small thing. Even as an online seller, how do you set the vision for your online store in Instagram, Facebook, Elizabeth, Shopee? What would it be known for? Aside from branding, how is the customer experience altogether? You have to think about those thoughts because you set the vision. How do you want to be known and what are you doing about it? And second sub point or letter B is have ownership. No, it doesn't mean that you own a company and become bossy and all that. Nah, it's all about taking ownership of your path for your work. Being accountable and not pointing fingers and blaming others when things go bad, that is ownership. Taking the fault and the responsibility and proactively finding ways to solve it. The continuous try to do things better, more effective, or more efficient. It, it is doing things with excellence in every single day. There was a time where I was frustrated at my job in Philippine Airlines back then when I was a cabin crew. It's so back then in Pal, I was working around 16 hours a day, six days a week for about three months. It, it was it was really bad because 14 hours of those 16 hours I was flying so it was one hell of a jet lag right but you know um as I set a vision for myself I realized that parang, teka lang, even though I'm tired even though I'm I'm groggy na and everything else I still have to be kind and attentive attentive to passengers trust me bawal matulog ang FAs kasi once you're caught Automatic tanggal ka. No explanation. Just pag kung napicturan ka ng tulog, you're out. Wala ka ng trabaho. So, well, bakit David? Ba't, ba't naman ginong hikpet? Well, then it's because of safety. We are first in line when it comes to the safety of the aircraft in the cabin side, in the passenger side. So, we'll never actually know when something bad may occur. So, you have to always stay alert. So, sleeping on the job can cause lives if ever you're not careful but even then of course the, re the reality was the job was very exhausting so as a human being i can only take so much but even then you have to love your job or perhaps love the people that your job is serving so even when the world doesn't reward you remember that god is the god who sees you and your heart he doesn't take your labor in vain he is your real boss overall. Okay? Sub point number three or letter C. It's called unbox. This point simply means this. Do not limit yourself to what you were only assigned to do. Okay? When you're an employee or even a leader in your firm, fill in the gap when there's a need. Don't box yourself to a job title. Come on, man. Remember, you guys will work as a team. You get to help each other's back, and you must have the right heart and the right attitude in doing so as well, in helping out. So working for several years in the workforce, I, come to, I came to realize that these opportunities that I have right now aren't exactly mine. All my achievements are actually his work. I was just his medium to make things happen. Though it took a lot of faith and a force it was far from my comfort zone. All it took was that one step of obedience of saying yes to him. And the rest was up to him. So eventually, I just realized that the employees under me or the staff working for me aren't actually working for me. But in the bigger picture, in a sense, I was actually working for them. Because I was trying, I began to actually have that kind of art that I will grow this company so much and able for me to provide better wages and better benefits for these employees of mine. 
when you actually have this kind of mindset, when you actually have that kind of awakening, your entire leadership approach, it just changes. That gave me the fuel to get out from my bed every single morning and work, even when I don't feel like it. So overall, guys, those are two lessons I'm bringing in today with a lot of sub points. Because this webinar is about operations management, I'm going to give you a peek of how things normally work in my company. So my company is basically an FMCG company, otherwise known as a fast moving consumer goods. So we supply for retail giants like SM or Robinsons or Landmark and you know even boutique shops or even the Visoria or the online shops. Of, we supply them of baby products with our brand. That we import a lot of items from abroad. We have a manufacturing plant in Thailand and we import our items from there, going here and selling it here. So the manufacturing plant has a different management over there in Thailand. So right now here in the, in the importer and distributor sector, that's my company right now. So yeah, so as you can see in this picture right now, the basic summary of how we work all together. So as you can see, um, una una share the company owner. This, um, just so you know, these are not in chronolo chronological order, okay? So as you can see over here, the general operations, that's me, that's who I am. And Blusha, so I handle the department of research and development and sales and marketing. Tapos, yung sa ilalim naman dyan, yung kulay orange, ito yung supply chain operation. Ang hinahandle ng federal director ko for that is the warehouse inventory logistics and transportation department. So for the company owner, ang pinaka hinahandle niya is yung HR, yung legal, and yung admin, and of course the finance. So David, ano yung procurement? So the procurement executive, me, general operations director, and of course my supply chain director and the company owner, we all work together with the procurement team. So I'm just gonna lay out how it actually works. For first, let's go for HR, legal, and admin support. They handle all the legal paperwork, importation documents, and data consolidations, and ensuring that the companies the company works like a well oiled machine. So basically, it's our it's it's the skeletal that we have as a company. They're our nervous system. Accounting and finance, the man, they handle the funds management and allocation. Accounting, of course, budgeting and profit loss management and taxes. Anything about money that is going in or going out and or going around the company, it will be handled by accounting and finance. So um, under me naman is sales and marketing. Sales and marketing is the one responsible to whom we sell it to, how much do we sell it for, branding, advertising, and territory expansion. So for example, Secure Gold, we have over um, 13 branches by now. So Super 8, we have around 17 branches right now. So SM, we're nationwide. So in the middle part, and for research and development, we ensure that the company product offerings are always up to date. So kailangan pala every single month may fly kang in offer. May bago kang item every single month to offer the market. Because kung, kung wala kang bagong item, and you're just gonna rely on your, you know, your old items, over time, your competitors will just, you know, go past by you. And you don't want that. Malala uska. That's why there's research and development to ensure that you have something new to offer. And the R&D is also um, responsible in working side by side with, you know, uh, with marketing in terms of knowing what the market wants, ano yung magiging trending for the next six months, ano yung magiging, uh, ano yung mga dapat natin ipenta or push sell for, for this season, for this Christmas, yung mga ganun. And of course, research, kung for example, ano yung bagong trend or ano yung mga bagong material na ginagamit sa mga feeding bottles, or even yung, ano yung ginagawa ng mga kalaban namin, mga ganun. So, yung supply chain director ka naman, under him is the warehouse inventory. They handle the stock management and storage processes na ensuring na lahat ng stocks that we receive are well taken care of and are organized and everything is accounted for. Logistics naman, sila yung handle or nagpapadala sa mga stores namin, sa mga consignments namin, sa, mga, sa SM, and everything sila yung deliver. Sila bahala sa route scheduling nun. And every week, we have to deliver to somewhere or they're the ones who organizes that together with the warehouse inventory. So the procurement, like what I said kanina, it works hand in hand with R&D and finance to select which items to invest on and introduce in the product line. So for example, um, what is R&D fast um, 
a bagong item. Let's say, facial for baby. Example lang, facial for baby. So, according to our research and development, no one has this in the market in the market yet. Or kung meron man, super mahal or super rare, we can develop it in a way na adjustable siya some way or somehow. I still don't know how to do it, but yeah, it represents na yan sa sales and marketing, which is uh, my other department na, guys, what do you think of this? Um, Bebenta ba to? How much do we sell it for? Ano yung, ano yung projected, ano yung forecast natin if ever we sell it at this price? Once all of it is done, we're gonna go now to our procurement person. Kasi he will also do the budgeting eh, of how much lang ang kaya natin ilabas together with finance team. So when everything is all done, I will call up my supply chain director. So we're going to ask him, so bro, do we still have space for this? New item. Ang maging size ng box na is ito, ganyan natin maging weight niya. Where do we store it? Kailangan ba malamig to? So we need to have him informed as well. So ultimately, it's a company owner now. We'll present it to him. And when he likes it, when he's convinced, and we're all convinced, it's a go. So once we do that, the finance team pays uh, our manufacturer, which is also part of our company. But you know, overall, we still pay that. So once it arrives here in the Philippines, all the importation documents and the tax and the directions and FDA are all going to be taken care of our legal and admin support team. So once those products arrive, it will go now by sales and marketing. If we push any sales and marketing sa mga stores namin or sa mga sa SM and sa different outlets namin, and yun, um, our marketing team naman will just try to brand it and try to get it out there. Because even though you have the item, how are you going to let your market know that it's already here? That's what marketing people do. And salespeople naman are the one who actually goes out and sell this to SM and to make them order from us and to these outlets. So overall, that's how it works in a nutshell. So I hope it really makes sense. So yeah, basically I manage the entirety of it together with my fellow supply chain director. And yeah, we so far it's been a really crazy you know, really crazy time, but you know, that is good. That is good. And so that's it for how operations management works. So just to do a recap of what I taught you guys. Number one, communication is very, very important. You got to be intentional about it. You have to have the right attitude from within and being mindful about how you say things and how you receive things and having simple gestures that can elevate camaraderie and culture is organizing your thoughts well to better have a more efficient and more effective form of communication and learning how to adapt and be teachable and having the grace and humility to learn and listen to others as well. Lesson number two is having a vision and being intentional about making it happen. It is something that leaders really have. Knowing your goals and formulating strategies with your team and doing your research and inspiring other people to do it forms a great team that is cohesive and united. So we have to take the lead and have accountability for every action or result that you or my team makes and not being boxed or being limited in what is only attached or what is only assigned to me to do. These things, whether in business, in your career, in your life, can help you go far. So again, guys, my name is David Simon Reyes. I just want to thank you again for I hope uh, I'm still practicing my Tagalog right now, but I hope that even though I was speaking English, I wasn't boring. But you know, I just want to be um, open as well and be casual of who I am, this, who I am, this, how you're going to see me when you talk to me in person. It's, it's pain me out. Uh, so yeah, I just want to, uh, before I just go and go ahead for the Q&A portion, I just want to you know, to pray with you guys for our nation right now because I think we need it the most. Um, if you don't believe in God, that's okay. If you hate God, that's okay. We love you. It's perfectly fine, but, you know, please, just for the country, um, please join us as we just try to pray for this nation. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this young generation right now who I'm speaking to and whom I'm praying with, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you, um, despite whatever is going on, you give these people faith, you give these people hope, and I'm pretty sure some of them are having mental health issues, or some of them are having a lot of, you know, anxiety about what's going to happen or how things are going to be. Even the teachers, Lord God, even the management of these schools, Lord, I pray that you give them guidance and you give them um, that strength 
And that faith, O Lord God, that no matter what, how bad things go, we will rise up as we always do, O Lord God. And may, may we do it with the right attitude, with grace in our heart and with love. And that despite our differences with one another, we will learn how to love one another. Even in the middle of disagreements, even the, in, in the middle of, you know, of our difference in political views, Lord, I just pray that love will prevail. Love will win despite the hate. Love will win despite the confusion. Love will win on our God despite the fear. Because fear doesn't come from you on our God. It comes from the enemy and may we not entertain it anymore. May we act in faith. May we have may we act in wisdom and being wise. Lord, it's pray, Lord God, that you touch the hearts of these young people and even the teachers and professors to actually um look up to you always and keep going. Because you see them, Lord, you see these souls, you see this their efforts and their cries and their tears, and you hear their heart, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you really touch their lives and really pour your love on them. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for everything. In your mighty name, Lord God, we pray. Amen. So, guys, um, the table is now up for the Q&A, and I will reveal myself in 3, 2, 1. Thank you, guys. Salamat. Bye-bye. <laughs>
And once you discover what you want, but you still can make opportunities out of it, is take a sa job mo. Because sometimes you just need to do two things in life: one job that keeps you alive, and one job that keeps you going in life. So, yeah, um, if you're passionate about something, you have, if you have passions, uh, let's say, sa filming, sa arts, do it. Good, but don't do not quit your job. Follow the opportunities, but take your passion with you. Always have a hobby. Always try to balance work and life always. Because trust me, life is not a race. It's a journey. It's a marathon. And it's always about... Hindi yung tipong achievements eh. Question is, are you happy? Are you stable? There's always going to be a balance with that, okay? And not everyone will be a fan of it. Not everyone will actually support you with it. But the important thing is within you. Are you actually in it? Is, is this actually you? Or... Basically, is it providing what you need? So, yeah. Yes, thank you, sir. So, I'm sure nasagot mo yung question ng ating student. <laughs> so, we have sorry. another question from Johnny okay. Guzman from RTU. Hi, sir John, David. What, what hey. values did you learn on your work journey related to paikipagkapwa tao or paikisama with your workmates, even with your bosses? Oh, wow. Ang dami na na. <laughs> Pakikisama. Uh, well, so to lang, I mean, when you're going to work from different fields and different, you know, areas in life, you're going to meet with a, lot of pe- with a lot of people and a lot of people means a lot of personalities. Okay. And the thing is, um, you can never please everyone. You can, you can never be liked by everyone. You have to accept that. Don't, don't kiss other people's, you know, don't be subsept. You don't have to be, you just have to be you. But sometimes, yes, important na kailangan you guys work along together with your colleagues that's true pero you don't have to compromise who you are for example work around them but um if this person doesn't like you still like what i said be a nice person kindness always wins kindness will never fail you masakit sa pride ego it's really hard to do it sometimes if they don't deserve it but you know working in the workforce for so many years it's just that not everyone will be pleased at you. Not everyone will like you and all. So if ever naman, dumaling ka sa punto na everyone hates you, you need to change something. Kung, kasi kung pare-pare silang may galit sa'yo, there's something wrong with you. And it's okay. Sometimes you have to humble down yourself and observe, adjust accordingly. And then, you know, um, adjust what you can and retain what you can't. Leave it to God, you know. And yeah, just do your job well and be kind to all. I mean, that's something that uh, I carry sa lahat ng trabaho ko. I try to get along with all of my colleagues, but if I try, but they still don't, you know, reach out or they still don't open themselves, it's okay. I can force myself into you. But when the time comes that I need to work with you, I will do my best to work with you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Napaka motivating talaga and inspiring no. Every answer, Mona. Yes. <laughs> I wear my yeah. heart. I wear my heart. Yeah. Uh, we have another question for from Steve Dolls. Okay. Hi, Pa. I'm from Bicol University. What oh, has wow. been your biggest and toughest struggle you've experienced along the way in achieving whatever position you have now? Can you cite some techniques and parameters to work professionally in workforce? Well, techniques and parameters. I need some data over here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, questions you, are kind of big, but... Yeah. You guys are very... Um, I mean, I'm very impressed. That's one thing because, you know, it just shows how these students are really interested in doing well in their careers. So the question was basically what was my hardest struggle and how I actually um, cope up with it. So there's a lot of hard things that I've gone through. Different industries comes with different challenges and all. But let's say recently na lang in my workforce, uh, in my work right now. So I mentioned before that the um, perspective of doing the job well is that so I can provide better wages for my next company, uh, for my next company, for my employees or my subordinates. Na parang I'm going to increase the sales so much that everyone will be promoted sa salary nila. But what will happen if you work so hard and you reach your targets, pero yung boss mo, in the sense people around you that broke my heart that was challenging for me because like i'm doing this for the good and i even asked god like lord 
this is for the people around me. Why not? What's what's wrong? And everything else. But then I just realized that hey, you have you were given a part, you were given a purpose to do, and that's your only that's your purpose, and you fulfill that, that's good. The other things that you can't control or that is out of your hand, don't try to control it. You're not God. Just trust it. Just trust it to God na lang. Yung mga bag, it's like um control what you can and just leave it to God what you can. Because in the end of the day, man, you did your job, you did your part. And for me, just continue. God put me here and I did my job. I I, I and if other people won't see it, other people other people won't appreciate it, it's okay. I'm still gonna work with them, I'm still gonna love them, I'm still gonna work the same because after all, man, I'm working for God. God is my real boss, and he's the one who sees me and he sees my effort. And God is not someone who takes you for granted. So I'm trusting him that someday or somehow the employees that I have or the people that I'm working with will get the salary that they deserve. Because for me, yung mga katrabaho ko, yung mga employees ko, they're older than me. Yung mga senior na yung mga yan. And gusto ko na, I want to give them a higher salary because gusto ko yung mga anak nila and all. Yung, yung tipong, I want to give them, I want to give them give the best lives to their kids. Not because, because parang, I want to be sarang someday that my employees will remember me as someone, my sister David is someone who really cared for us and who really put us first before himself and i think that's what every leader or every operations manager should be like so yeah a perfect explanation for of how kindness wins <laughs> thank you <very> yeah much, <laughs> and we have another well, um, from france of rtu good afternoon sir among all the work field you have been to what was the best one you have enjoyed doing Thank you for your time po, and effort in the webinar today. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. I and oh wow. Um, I enjoyed all of them at some point, but of course, the pinaka na enjoy ko would probably be. Um, that's a hard question because I don't want to be biased. Then, but like what I said, um, um, my job as a cabin crew was very fun, not because it was easy. But because I know it, um, you get to travel a lot. Yes, you get to get to places and get to know a lot of people. But the thing is about the cabin crew job is, um, once sanay ka na and na master mo na yung kailangan mong master na memorize mo na yung buong libro and everything else. Everything is easy. Routine na rin lahat. Oh, another flight, alam mo na yung gagawin mo. Even kahit tutulog ka, alam mo na yung ginagawa mo. So technically, you do this job and napaka routine na the master muna and everything else and it doesn't challenge you anymore i i don't want to say it was my most fun job but it was the most comfortable job i've had because uh, i don't need to use this anymore once the master ko na lahat i don't need to use this anymore because alam ko na eh, muscle memory ko na lang halos eh, and everything else but yeah i have to stay alert and everything but yeah that's the most comfortable job that i had but the most one i had fun with would probably be being a barista because it has a great culture in terms of learning and development. Starbucks will really invest in developing you, and I love that. And I don't know, until now, I still remember the teachings I learned in Starbucks, which I applied to my further job. So Starbucks was kind of like my foundation of how I work, because Star I don't know, part time with Starbucks, they will give you benefits such as healthcare. And you know, it's, a, it's very important to Starbucks to have a fun culture, now all the baristas are getting along. It's very important. So I guess it's the most fun job I've ever had. And especially, iba-ibang tao. I was working sa Starbucks na branch na USD. So yung mga sadyante na customer ko, eventually naging kaibigan ko. And that's the most fun job ever. So. I sir, thank you po for that question. Uh, I for the answer. <laughs> <That> answer. <laughs> <laughs> for the answer, yes. Yeah. Uh, You've been through a lot, sir, enough, uh, from the good and the bad. So yeah. we have a simple question for, from one of the students of EFU Diliman. How do you deal with the failures, with failures? Oh, wow. That's a deep, deep question. Until now, I'm struggling with failures. I hate failures. But I just realized that sometimes you just have to accept it. Now, wait. I failed. And it's okay. 
you know, everyone does it and it's OK. You know, the thing is, sometimes you say. When when you fail, because yung tinatawa sa yo, it's easy to ignore. Print tinin mo sa mo. That's something that's hard to ignore. When you fail and everything else, or when you experience failures, it's gonna be so cliche to say na you just get back up and you know go with it again. No, if you accept, if you face failure, even if you feel bad about it, and if you if you you know you're heartbroken about it, okay lang. Embrace it. Like okay, I'm like, feel ako, masakit, iyak ako, I'm mag mag magbumok mo ako, and everything else. But here's one thing: it's okay to be sad, but it's not okay to stay sad. Even as you fail, you fail forward. Just like one of my favorite actors, Denzel Washington, said, "You fail forward. It's okay to fail." But say hindi pa. Yung tipong example, um, you're trying to stop from smoking. For example, you're trying to stop from smoking. Then you say, "Come on, let." Nah, okay. You say, "I fail right now, but in the next day, I'll try again." In a way, na parang I'll set parameters next time, so I'll do better next time. Niy tipong let fail ako. Okay, back to be show again. You know, don't fail backwards. Fail forward. Try again, over and over again. You know, in a way, na parang you you won't be afraid of failing again because you know that there's value in even the failure that you have. You learn something from it. Never underestimate the value of failure. It sucks, I know. It hurts. I get that. But in the end of the day, where are you going? Are you going back to where you started? Or are you going forward to where you plan to, despite the stumbling blocks that you face? Even if you have to crawl forward, it's okay. Kahit umiyaka while you're crawling, as long as you're moving forward, no matter how slow, take your time. Progress slowly. Actually, slow progress is better than no progress at all. So when you fail, simmer in it. Go, go do what you have to do. Iyaka, go ahead. But then after that, tapos na ang tapos ng iyakan. Game face again. Go at it again. So yeah, never ignore your emotions. Never ignore them. Acknowledge them, but at the same time, never let them control you. So. Precisely. Thank you, sir. And um, siguro last three questions, Bob. Wow. Afternoon, sir, <laughs> can you cite some techniques okay. and skills to achieve your main goals? That's a, that's a vague question. Oh my goodness. Uh, science and techniques. Now, your current hmm. goals. How do you uh, deal with them, Bob? What are the techniques or skills you techniques use? Right now? Skills. Um, you basically try to get to know a lot of people. Um, especially right now, sa you expand your network. You don't enclose yourself in their comfort zone. For example, uh, my goal right now is to is to actually be the best marketer or whatever. So I try to learn from other people. I read books. I'm I'm investing myself in learning in a lot of activities that will develop me. That's my skill or technique. It's the it's the fact that when I got to this point, that point. For me, it's not enough. Okay, I reach this point. Where's the next goal? Where's the next level? And you try to aim for that. You don't stay in the panel. Yes, I achieve it. Nagito na ako. I get it. And now I'm gonna rest. No. When you do that, when you reach it, okay, now where's the next goal? Where's the next milestone? It's a process. Because in the end of the day, you have to realize that why am I doing? You have to realize your purpose in life. And I found my purpose in God. And that's what gives meaning to my life. That's what gives me trying to get better and better because I know whatever I'm doing, it's not only for me, but it's also for the people around me. It's who I'm going to influence. It's who who's going to see me and look up to me. So for me, that's my technique, I guess, to never, never hinder or to never hate learning or to never just stay put in one corner and just be comfortable. I mean, yeah, sometimes at some point you have you can actually enjoy the achievements that you have, enjoy it, but never let it, um, ne never let it halt you or delay you in the man that you were supposed to be. Level one is done. You're now in level two. Now aim for level three and on and on and on. Read books if you have to. I hate books. I hate reading books. Trust me, I hate it. Hindi ako bookworm, but my friends are bookworms. But even then, what do what do I do? I still read them. 
one page at a time. Even though I hate it, I don't like it. I'm boring. Read one page at a time. If I can't read one page, I read one paragraph at a time. If you need one paragraph, one sentence. If you need one sentence, one word. Never, ever stop. Ayan, so thank you, sir. We have one interesting question for another interesting question from Reset oh. Sarmiento of Rizal okay. Technological University of Bonny Campus. Good day, sir. Earlier, you're talking about being happy with your work and be passionate with it. But what will you do if you're unhappy with the environment that you're moving, but your passion is in that work that you're doing? Would you choose to leave that work or stay? Why? Okay, that's a good question. That's very tricky. But then I experienced that myself. Like, hey, um, you you love the job, but you don't love the people around it, or you don't love the culture or how things work in your job. So what do you do? As much as you can, you set the tone. Like what I said, you set the culture, you set the vibe. Kite empleado ka, you have to be different. You go to a job, you hate everyone, but you have to be the change that you want. Okay? If you want other people to be kind, then be kind to them, even when they don't be kind to you again. You say over time, they will realize that. And and in the process, pray for it. Like, Lord, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep going because this is what I job. This is what I love to do. You see my heart. You see me. I'm going to keep going. And then if ever, you kept going and you still hate it and there's still no progress, there's still no movement, but your passion is still there, I guess it's a time for you to move. Scary, uh, even then. Even as you move, even as you go somewhere, carry your passion with you. Not bitterness, not anything else, but carry your passion. Don't hold grudges. Just, you know, forgive. You know what? They hate me. They don't like me. They're sila, toxic sila. Well, guess what? I forgive it. I'll forget it and I'll leave it here. Or for example, if you want to stay, toxic kayo and everything else, well, guess what? I'm going to be the one whose ambition for myself is to be that one employee na hindi toxic. And we can say nakaka-walang gana, nakaka-discourage when you're doing a good thing but other people don't appreciate it or they don't see it or they don't, it's not, they don't care about it. But you, you know what I said? There's someone who sees every effort that you do and in time, in due time, he will reward it. And that's where I keep my hope. And if you ask me, David, what if naman you don't believe in God? Well, trust me, I don't know the answer because that's what my life is all about. I've seen God, I've experienced Him, so I can never deny Him. And everything about me is about Him. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. I hope the viewers and students are taking note of everything that Mr. David is saying because it's very helpful talaga siya sa journey, niyo, sa career journey niyo and life journey. Niyo. So yeah. for the last question po from Emmanuel Sikat of Central Mindanao University. Oh yeah, Mindanao, what's up? A lot of students' biggest worry is whether we will find a job as soon as we graduate. Seeing as you look young and successful, are there any secrets or advice you can give us? Thank you for the compliment of saying that I look <laughs> young, <laughs> first and foremost. But you know, even until this very moment, I don't consider myself as successful as other people may see. Because in the end of the day, in the end of the day, you know, like, um, what is success to you? Um, for me, I say success is success is a um, measure of success is how many people I've helped, how many people I've inspired, how many people have actually, you know, um, you know, helped, yeah, promoted or you know, nurtured or influenced. That's that's where I draw my success from. And yeah, I'm inspiring people now. Maybe, maybe not. But still, then I'm still trying. So until I get to the top, and there's around eight billion people in the world, and if eight bill billion people hasn't been inspired by my talk or by the way I do things, well then I'm not. I'm still not in a successful stage yet. You know. But you know, answering your question, uh, hey, um, a lot of young people are worried about if they're going to get an, a job by the time they graduate. Trust me, there will be people, there will be graduates who will get a job at that, and there will be those who don't. But eventually, you will. Um, even right now, um, there's a lot of people who, loses their who lost their job because of the pandemic. And likely, I might be one of them, to be honest. But then, what do you do about it? Do you go into your room, salt in the corner all day and do nothing? 
No, you go job hunting. I don't care if it takes you 300 job applications. Still continue to do it until you land a job. Never stop because like what other people say, you, you never actually um, you never actually lose or you never actually messed up until you stop. Because then some way or somehow there's going to be that person who's going to give you a chance and all you need to do is continue, continue and continue. And it might take three months after graduation before they get a job. It might take six months. It might take a year. It might take three years. But in the end of the day, you have to use your resources. You have to expand yourself in your horizons in trying to get to know a lot of people in different areas and different networks and being open to explore opportunities. And while you're at it, try to learn from an online webinar just like this one. Try to have LinkedIn training and daming academy and daming online training ngayon. and try to find ones that are legit and are free and you know get certificates and polish your resume. Ang tip ko lang to fresh graduates and even to someone like me, ang resume ko until now one page lang because it only takes for an HR person to to look at your resume. It only takes six seconds to convince them if it's worth entertaining. So kung six seconds. One, two, three, maybe flip by end. That's already one second, right? So, kung one page pa lang yan, yung jinan lahat, concise, straightforward, and specific. Chances are there's a higher chance of being called. But if not, it's okay. Try to polish your resume over and over again. And don't be afraid to ask for help as a senior, as a mentor, or as someone who's influential or successful in the field. Now, hey, can you ask for tips and everything else? And once you apply or get an interview, apply it. You know, try to form scripts, try to polish your communication skills and even your English, Tagalog, or whatever language you want to actually acquire. But in the end of the day, what you're doing in the current process, you have to embrace that. It's going to suck because life sucks. I get it. But it's about what you make out of it that makes it really beautiful. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, then, po, sir. Thank you. Mr. David Simon Reyes, let's all give Mr. David Reyes a cheerful virtual clap for his wonderful speech. Thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us, Mr. Reyes. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow. Thank, you. Thank you for your stories and uh, business and career values you've shared with us. It is a real pleasure to have you with us today. So in return, we would like to present a certificate of appreciation Allow me to read the quotation. Oh, wow. We present you a certificate of appreciation for Mr. David Simon Reyes in tribute for your willingness to share your wisdom and expertise as a speaker in this seminar entitled Lakbay OM, The Nature of Operations Management, given this fifth day of September 2020 on Microsoft Teams. Signed by Maria Jamina Feliz, B. Villarreal, the president of OMSA, and Mr. Leonard C. Canamo, CBA and MBA of, and the advisor of OMSA. Thank yes. you again, sir. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat, OMSA. Yes. And to Charm Dokod, you can finally talk to me casually. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, yes. yeah. thank you. Thank you, sir. And please stay safe. All right. God bless, guys. Cheers. So for Bye -bye. our students with us today, the viewers and the audiences, Please stay tuned as the Operations Management Students Association's President, Ms. Jemina Villarreal, introduce the closing remarks. Hi guys, good afternoon. I am Jem, the president of the organization that has organized this event, which is Young Operations Management Students Association, or OMSA of FEU Deleman. Ayun, all right. So I have learned so much from our um, speaker's presentations. I hope and I am actually pretty sure that you guys did learn a lot too. Hindi ba guys? So ayun, this event is definitely a success. And so I and my fellow officers would like to thank our speakers for today, Ma'am Mercado and Sir Reyes, for the enlightening presentations. We are um, very grateful for the time and effort you both took to share your thoughts and experiences with us, the operations management students. I would like to thank also my OMSA family, most especially the officers who helped organize this event. Also to our advisor, Sir Kanyamo, for the 
support and guidance. And of course, on behalf of my OMSA organization, I thank you all for being with us here today and taking the time to attend and learn in this webinar. All of you taking time out of your busy schedules means a lot to us. So we have reached the end of this webinar. And mind you, this is just the first out of the three webinars that we have prepared for you for our Lakbay OM webinar series. So grabi na yun today, di ba? Sobra dami na, sobrang dami nating yes. and sobrang galing ng ating mga speakers. So what more pa sa mga susunod na webinars, di ba? So I hope you attend din sa susunod na webinars. And before I end this, I want to invite everyone in our short film competition. So you may find the details sa I mean, Facebook page. So don't forget to like our page, FU Deliman Onsa. Basically, this short film competition has a theme which is life under quarantine. So we require the films to have a core message or an advocacy related to that theme. So you may register now and it would be up until September 14, 2020. Ayan, I hope to see you all again in our next webinar. Thank you so much. Stay safe and I wish the best in your OM journey. Thank you for tuning with us today, students. Once again, thank you for our guest speakers, Ms. Mina Mercado and Mr. David Simon Reyes. This event truly became successful and impactful because of you. I would like to thank FEU's Operations Management Students Association for organizing this event and giving us a head start to start our September right. For all the students with us today, we appreciate you being with us today, so we would like to give you an e-certificate that you can obtain by clicking the link shown right on our screens. Type nyo lang ang link and fill up the form and you will be receiving the certificate through your email. It is shown on our screen, so just click the link or type it on the web. So thank you again to everyone. Once again, I'm Zal Vitali, the Committee Head for Multimedia, the MC, and your online kakwentuhan for today. Wishing you all a good afternoon. Sana madami tayong napulot na aral today na I'm sure na makakatulong sa mga desisyon natin sa buhay. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and stay safe. Don't forget to click the link, to type the link, and fill up the form to get your e-certificates. We will be sending them through your email soon. So, I enjoy kayong lahat. Thank you then. Sa mga pumunta. You're welcome and enjoy the rest of your day.